Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of Chin Chin. I'm your host Katie Shimatero and in today's episode we're taking a focus on Michigan craft beer and hard cider. Today I'm here with Samal Yates, Ted Ross and a special guest Rob Lauer from Blake's Orchard. So stay tuned because we have an exciting episode for you guys today. Autumn is a wonderful time to be a beer drinker, especially in Michigan. There are so many wonderful styles that our craft breweries uh, are excited to release as the, as the temperature gets cooler, richer flavors uh, are, are, are brought to the table. Um, and there's some really cool examples here on the table right now from some of my favorite breweries. Um, I guess I'm gonna start with, with Bell's, probably Michigan's flagship brewery based out of uh, Comstock near Kalamazoo. This is Best Brown Ale. It's, it's a rich, malty, uh, chocolatey, roasty sort of ale that's just really, really soothing and nice to drink in cooler temperatures. Something you can just cuddle up next to the fire and, and, and slowly sip and really enjoy the complexities and the flavors. Um, along with fall comes pumpkin beer, and there's a lot of different interpretations out there. One of my favorites is the Warlock. Warlock is produced by Southern Tier Brewery out of Lakewood, New York. And this is actually pumpkin beer brewed in a stout style. So stout, what does that mean? Stout uh, is, is, is an ale, a, a specific style of beer that's brewed. Uh, the first thing that, that people notice about stouts are intensely dark colors. And colors in beer come from basically the degree of, of roastiness in the barley that's being used. So the more heavily the barley is roasted, the darker the, the, the final product will become. So, Warlock uh, is produced with real pumpkins. They put cinnamon, nutmeg, clove. It's like drinking pumpkin pie. There's layers and layers of flavor. Super, super complex and a really nice sipping beer. Um, hard, to, hard to not talk about Oktoberfest when we're talking about autumn. These are uh, amber lagers. I have Hofbrau's interpretation right here in front of us. Um, these, these type of lagers are technically referred to as Marzen lagers. They uh, are historically produced in springtime and allowed to lager, which is German for to store, throughout uh, the summertime in, in the cooler, higher altitude areas of Bavaria. And um, after a long, slow, cool fermentation, they are, are ready at harvest time. So you get the cool, you get the crispness and refreshing style of, of most lager beers that you might associate with uh, with a little bit more of a rich malty style that's really, really nice for this time of year. Um, another one of my favorites brewed right in the Motor City in downtown Detroit, Atwater Blocks Vanilla Java Porter. We can't keep this on the shelf here at Vincent Joe's. It's brewed all year long, but it really starts to taste good this time of year. Uh, porter is a style that originated back in Great Britain. Uh, the name is thought to uh, come from the fact that that river and train porters really enjoyed this style. This one incorporates coffee and vanilla bean, and it just it, it tastes great uh, with cooler weather. Another highly sought after favorite uh, is the Griffin Claw Screaming Pumpkin. This is pumpkin ale brewed by a very gifted brewer at Griffin's Claw right in Birmingham, Michigan. Took a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival a few years back and has been highly sought after and, uh, and, and just delicious ever since then. Another one of my favorites, again, from, uh, from the celebrated Bell's Brewery uh, in Michigan is their Cherry Stout. And we look forward to this release uh, uh, every year. This is brewed with Michigan tart cherries, so you get a really, really nice uh, combination of, of roasty chocolate flavors from the, from the heavily roasted barley and Michigan tart cherries. We'd also like to remind you, on October 25th, at Vincent Joe's Clinton Township location, we're gonna have our Oktoberfest party where there will be fantastic uh, gourmet German food made on site and a German band. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. When we return, we've got Rob Lauer, a dear friend of mine, cider maker at Blake's Family Orchards in Armada, Michigan. See you then. ANA Recycling Center is Michigan's premier parts recycling center that saves you money while protecting the environment. We pay top dollar for late model junk cars, SUVs and trucks, all types, all models, both foreign and domestic. Search our online inventory to find used and refurbished parts. 
Need quick cash? Don't throw away your junk because your scrap metal is worth money. Selling has never been easier with our easy drive-on, drive-off scale. Visit ANA Recycling Center today. My name is Cheryl Steinhurst. My husband and I are owners of Steinies Tavern. We're located on the northwest corner of 25 Mile and Shelby Road. We offer a unique dining experience from our restaurant to our off-site catering. Everything we make is from scratch. We utilize Michigan-made products whenever possible. We're open seven days a week. We offer daily lunch and dinner specials, and we carry the most craft beers on draft in all of Macomb County. So plan on coming out to Steinies Tavern, where you come for the food and stay for the party. And we're back with Rob Lauer, dear friend of mine. Nice to have you, Rob. Thanks for having me, Ted. So I want you to tell us a little bit about, about the Blake story. Why is Blake's important? Uh, you know, what's exciting about uh, the falling temperatures is also harvest season. And um, I'd come back to Michigan early in the spring on a visit and stumbled over to Blake's Cider where I had ridden uh, the hay rides and so forth as a yeah, kid and yeah. found that they were additionally, in addition to producing wines, they were producing hard cider, which is near and dear to every Michigander that I can think Absolutely. of. Absolutely. We're the great apple state as well as the now great beer state. Right, right. And um, what's, what was exciting to see is that they were doing uh, the hard cider from their property and it was all locally grown and, you know. Right. Um, and from there, they were just trying to be as natural as possible and focus on Michigan made. And that b renaissance really um, got me excited because it Initially, I was just excited about making wine in California mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. got the degree and everything. But and when I back. saw what they're doing, um, I couldn't resist. And so now we've got the good fortune to be placed on shelves with all our eclectic varieties, ranging from your dry and sweet to hopped and habanero focused and uh, even a seasonality to it where we have an autumn spice blend and then mm -hmm. coming in the winter we have uh, one focused with uh, elderberries and coriander Very cool. and just being able to push the envelope and flavor pro uh, profiles has um, been the most exciting yeah, especially you when you have so many different varietals of apples to work with and those that season uh, elongating. I wanted to ask you, uh, you mentioned different apple varietals and things growing on your estate uh, could you tell our viewers, are, are there any specific varietals that maybe they would uh, recognize, or are these more historic heirloom varietals? Yeah, so um, we grow about 20 to 25 different uh, apple varieties okay. on the property. Okay. And in addition to g planting some more heirloom varietals since our initial push into the hard cider realm, we're also working with Northern Spy and some russets um, that work into our blend and you know your typical varieties of Macintosh and Red Delicious are also put in there to sure. add some complexity sure, and sure, sure. still represent where we're coming from too. What's exciting about the Blakes is that we've been growing apples there since 1947 yeah. That's and fabulous. you know the hard cider is a very clear representation of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the for lack of a better word terroir to the Blakes farm. That's really cool to talk about terroir uh, with a locally made hard cider I think that's great. Uh, do you do you find it uh, important uh, to incorporate as many apple varietals in into your final product as you can or uh, or is it uh, is it is it an individual basis? I mean, tell us a little bit how you how you figure out what you're going to put into each of these. You know, to be quite honest, being that it's our one year anniversary coming mm -hmm. up this uh, next weekend, mm -hmm. it's still there's still quite a learning curve to sure. finding out which varietals uh, match in a blend. Sure, it's. Um, we've been nailing it down closer and closer, but yeah. as the season goes, you got yeah. uh, early varietals to, that segue to mid se and then obviously to late varietals. And so working those into a blend is why we have the um, different branding to it so that we can see 
what bridal sure. focus uh, works the best. So I would assume like a like a winemaker would blend different grape varietals to bring different components to a wine. Right. You're doing the same with apples. You might use a specific varietal for acidity and a specific varietal for sugar content. And that's and the one beautiful for thing. Color and there you go. That's yeah. the beautiful thing about hard cider is that sure. it matches wine in those param acidity parameters and sure. tannic sort of focus in order to get be as antioxidant as you can. Yep. Cider in general, what I've found is that it's pretty finicky and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very fragile. So like beer, yes. where you have to be as squeaky clean as possible, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. have to be the same with working with, the, with, cider. with the cider. And so um, it's got that middle ground that's sure. great for a winemaker, but yeah. also exciting as um, a home brewer. So you can have um, a year-round focus where you make every a batch every month. Um, rather than just having a huge batch at the harvest that you have to babysit for. Sure, sure. So in addition to focusing on alcoholic beverages, Michigan made, I also am a big fan of the mm -hmm. farmer's markets and all the Michigan grown products. Okay. And so one of my favorite grocery stores here in Michigan, Vincent Joe's, mm -hmm. uh, happens to carry an eclectic uh, range of vegetables and fruits. And sure. You know, I wandered past the the peppers and saw that you have an abundance of habaneros, and I thought maybe I could give it yeah. a go and see yeah. uh, where that could match into a blend. Mm -hmm. And so um, I steeped the habaneros in um, our our flannel mouth brand, and you know, found that uh, it was missing something, and then yeah. found mangoes to work the best way to uh, broaden the mouthfeel and oh, cool. give um, kind of a match to that spicy aftertaste. Sure, 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 sure. And um, you know, the exciting thing about cider is that you can push those envelopes yeah. um, and get different flavors that people will still be excited about. Yeah, yeah. In closing, I'd like to thank all of our viewers. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much, Rob. Great to have you. Hope to see you all at our Oktoberfest at our Clinton Township location on October 25th. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs>